Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Postman tutorial, we are going to discuss a bit more about the end-to-end -end API testing, which is which will be manual, and a little more on different test cases and scenarios that you usually will be testing as an API tester. Right. So previously we have seen in the request basically, so we got to create an issue within Jira, right? So in order to create an issue, we first need to, the mandatory information that was required was the project info, basically in which project I'm going to create the issue, very obvious. Then what type of issue I'm going to create, right? So for example, story or task, etc. So which I got from this get call, get API call, get all issue types from the project. So in whichever project I'm going to create a particular issue, that project needs to support that issue type, right? So this call gave me the issue type and then I chose the issue type ID, which is the story ID and then the user. So basically get project gave me the project ID, get issue type for a project gave me the issue type ID. And then third mandatory information was the user who will be assigned, right? Who will be assigned to the issue that we are creating. So these three were the mandatory information. Why? Because we have seen that usually in your API documentation, it will all show all the mandatory attributes in the API, okay, that you have to provide. And in the UI as well, in the UI, we also seen that when we go to say, for example, any project here and try to create an issue. We clicked on create issue. You will see the project with a star. That means it's a mandatory information required. Then we have the issue type, which is mandatory information that is required. And then we have a summary. So summary, we don't need to get from anywhere, but in the JSON, we need to provide the summary. Okay. And then the reporter was the mandatory field. Okay. So this is what we provided here when we created the issue. Okay. So if we go and see the create issue, you will see that in the payload, okay, the endpoint was this. And in the payload, we provided project ID, we provided reporter ID, which we got from report call, report get call, project ID from the project get call, which are, which were the previous calls, right? So these two calls and then users from the users call, right? So this reporter from the users call and then summary here, right? So summary basically from the just typing in whatever summary. Okay. Now here I had removed this issue type. Okay. So last time when I did, I removed the issue type and I think I didn't save it. So let me quickly fix this request. Okay. Because if I send this now, you will see the issue type error that we need to choose issue type, specify an issue type. Okay. So this error is because we are missing the mandatory information. So let's go to the documentation, right? Let's go to the documentation here. And this was create issue, right? So we'll go, to, go into the issues in the left hand side, go into the issues and then we, we are creating an issue. So we'll go to the create issue and in the create issue, let me zoom in. In the create issue, we had referred to curl and in the curl, you'll see the data, right? So fields and everything. So there are many other fields as well. So for example, you want to specify more details, environment and other stuff. You can just update this JSON. Okay. You just add those tags within that JSON and those fields will be basically updated. For example, I want to assign the component. So add the component and put the component IDs within component. If there are any custom field that have been defined in Jira, then you put the custom field name and what value you want to choose there or populate there. Okay. So here we will quickly go and what we need is so you'll see you lot of information there, but we don't actually need all of it, right? So we'll simply go ahead and add the issue type, right? So because we remove the issue type there, so we'll add the issue type in the JSON. Okay. So let me maximize here and let me add the issue type. So we have the project ID. We have the reporter. Okay. And after reporter, let me put the issue type as well. And now issue type, we have to first see what all issue types are there. Okay. So for issue type, we had this get all issue types for a project, right? So this call, okay, if we go to the body, so this call, the project ID was 1001, right? Which we got from get project call. Let's see what all issue types are reported for this project ID, right? So if I go here, there are different issue type. type. 10013 is task, okay? 14 is subtask. We want to create a story, which is basically 10012. Okay, so let me copy that and we'll come here and put the issue type as 10012 there. 
okay and now let me change it a little bit okay so what i'll do is i'll say two attempt two okay just append attempt two there so it is clear that this is the new one and then we'll simply go ahead and send so this will basically what it will do is it will create an issue in this project which has this id and assign the reporter which has this id and the issue type will be story and the summary of the issue type will be populated as well so let me send so there is a there was a uh, okay a uh, parsing okay so json doesn't look okay there okay yeah so we forgot the comma there okay let me beautify and that will issue let me save it and send it okay so now you will see the issue has been created okay now we got this 201 created success everything is fine now will your test case stop here if you want to verify something so your test case for issue creation won't stop here you will create it first the next step will be you will check the if there is any call right to get the issue right so you will then pass in this id that has been created the issue id or the key and then see that the information or the issue that has been created actually exists with this id and this key within jira instance or not right so that will basically complete this flow of issue creation verifying that issue has been successfully created okay so this is what we'll do right so to create an issue we had this call now in order to see that this issue has been created successfully there should be some other get call as well okay so let's go to the documentation again and here in the documentation we have created an issue then we have this get issue right so in the left hand side you will see get issue so if I click on get issue, it will give me all the relevant basically documentation for the get issue. Okay, so get the endpoint. So it is same. And in the last, we have to put the issue ID in the path, right? So basically issue ID or key is something which we have to provide. Then what it does, it returns the details of an issue. Okay, so we have to either put the issue ID or key, either of these, right? So in, the, in here, we have got the ID. So I can either put the ID or key and check that this is actually created okay now other thing is because we have access to the ui as well we can quickly go ahead in this particular project okay and then go to the backlog and we'll be able to see that this issue has been created successfully okay so if we go here we go to the issues direct okay. so you can see if i you can see attempt to right so this is now created okay this was the previous issue that got created from the api request and this is attempt two because we have put the attempt two description right and this has been created successfully and then rama k has been assigned as a reporter because in the reporter id i have provided the id of rama k then rest all fields in this issue right so you'll see by default watch whatever default assignment for example priority is default if you have to assign priority in here we have to specify in the json what priority we want to assign okay then it will change this priority as well rest all fields will either be blank or the default set or default assigned values okay so now the next step is to make sure that this issue actually exists now since we have the ui you can see it here but ideally you won't be having the ui right so if you are doing api testing then you you, you will basically put the id or key and then make sure that this particular issue got created successfully so we'll go to the documentation and here we will in postman we will then duplicate this create request itself okay and then rename it get issue okay and now for get issue we know that we have to provide the path as the issue id or key right so path variable we have seen that if we simply start with colon right and then we say issue id right then in the parameter okay we should be able to see the oh, sorry we have to go ahead with the forward slash then colon and then issue id so that will be added so we'll see issue id or key so exactly we'll add the same thing okay so we'll say issue id or key and then simply add the path variable name, okay so issue id or key and then provide the value right so what was the value of the issue id that we got so it is one double zero six one okay now let's provide that value here okay and then in the authorization we anyways have the basic auth right because we have set up that and we have just duplicated that same value so that auth is already there 
the token we will simply save it and then send this particular request and see the response so you'll see method not allowed okay so let me check it let me go to the console so here we have the issue and the issue id so actually it got replaced here as a path variable and here in the console log you can basically see what all happened right so basically request body what body has been sent oh okay so this body is not required here right because see since we du duplicated these are the things that we have to keep in mind right when we are getting the issue right we don't need any of the body there but because we duplicated from the create it copied everything right so if we go to the documentation here we just need to provide the issue id or key right and then the, this is the path parameter then we have the we can provide the query parameter we can also filter what fields we want right this is another you know test cases there are so many test cases that you can basically write here do you want a specific field do you want to test all fields right so you put all there do you want to return any specific field you put specific fields right so those all query parameters you can test there okay but simple the most simple test would be to basically just put this url okay with issue id okay with the authorization and header accepting application json okay so now if we simply send this again now we don't need any of the body there right so we will simply send it again and still there is an issue so method not allowed to id that's the id let me put the key there okay see again the mistake post right so we are trying to get all right this is a get call it is not a post call okay so these are the very minor things even after working so much in postman i keep forgetting right so we have to get it right so we have to basically keep a keen eye on what exactly we are trying to do right this is, a, this is a get call we are trying to get the detail so and then i was trying with post which was not good okay so now i've changed it to the get now it should work exact okay so you'll see the 200 okay okay let me show you all the details basically and then the issue id what all keys there all the fields basically you'll see all the fields are being displayed here okay so everything that you see is being displayed from the from your issue that got created okay so the description and if we go to the project info right and then we should be getting that attempt to right the summary right so this is basically this is one of the end-to-end -end sort of manual test case of how you are going to create an issue then with that api call what is an outcome then you hit that second call to see that outcome matches exactly with what you have sent in the post call what whatever we sent in the post right whatever detail uh, is reporter is reporter id exactly same is the issue type exactly same is the summary that we typed in in the creation of the issue exactly same that we get here right are all the fields that are being returned properly showing the relevant data that should be there okay so these are some of the very basic manual api test cases that you can come up from reading the documentation it doesn't matter what sort of project you are working in you simply have to go ahead and follow the documentation right now here i can do so many different test cases all fields i can do a field array basically i if i want to check that i just want a limited number of fields to be returned then i'll put the query parameter and in the array i'll specify these many fields should be returned right and i'll verify that so this is how an api tester will go ahead and test okay so if we talk about the this whole thing end to end go to the collection right so now we'll see that in order to test this create issue the whole thing we have so many calls first call to get the project second to get issue type third to assignable uh, get the assignee then use all this information that we got from get call into the create issue so that issue got created right once issue got created successfully then we again did the get call to get the issue that got created with create issue and this all five call form one end-to-end -end test case one manual end-to-end -end test case now you can imagine if you are doing all of this manually right how tedious the job becomes you you fetching the project id noting it down somewhere then getting the issue type id noting it down somewhere then assignee noting it down some somewhere then creating an issue with all of that information right then getting that issue information and then 
or getting the created issue ID and key and then checking the details from the get issue call. And that is why we do automation. So say for example, we do a get project call automatically that project ID and we, we do all these three call, right? And automatically whatever project ID we want to choose that automatically gets populated here in the create issue, JSON, the issue type gets populated, the assignee gets populated automatically. This call gets through automatically whatever issue ID got created that automatically gets passed to the get issue and we get to see what all response is there and we automatically write test case to verify all of that information that we have that we have gone that we have got from the get issue right so this is what the purpose of automation will be within postman so that we save a lot of our, our time not doing this tedious work manually okay and this is all what we'll be learning with the help of basically so that we, we need to learn a little bit of javascript so i'll be covering javascript as well and then we'll be using javascript to write, write, write snippets and write those test cases within postman that will make your life much much easier in terms of api testing and automating it okay so that's all for this video i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching